Hello and welcome to this video. So this video then we're going to look at how we might go about identifying trades on a moving average cross. I'm starting from the now familiar notebook. I'm just going to make a couple of changes. The MA list, let's just for convenience for this video re reduce this. Let's say we're going to look at the 16 moving average crossing the 64 moving average as being our trade. So I'll execute this cell and now MA list is a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to start from the top and execute all of the cells just going down so that we have our MA data frame. So execute the drop NA, make some space above DF plot, and let's just double check what we have before we carry on. Okay, so we have our DFMA and that has the moving average 16 and the moving average 64. So how do we identify a trade here? Well, a cross will be when either on one row, the MA16 was below the 64, on the next it was above the 64, or vice versa, it was above the 64 and then the next candle it was below the 64. That would indicate we've crossed. So we need to find some way of doing that. Now, the way I'm going to do this is what for me is the most clear way of doing it. We're not doing it necessarily the most efficient way, but we're doing it the clearest way. So we're going to make a new column and we're going to write DFMA the new column is diff for difference, and it's equal to DFMA MA16 minus DFMA MA64. Now, if I run DFMA head again, you can see that now we get the difference between the 16 and the 64, always 16 minus 64. So there's our difference. So if the previous difference is a different sign to the current difference, then we know there's been a cross. So if we go from negative to positive or vice versa, then there must have been a cross. So what we need for convenience on our row is the previous diff value. And the good news is we can get this very easily. So to do this, we'll type df underscore ma and then diff prev for previous diff is equal to dfma.diff.shift1. And what this shift one does is it shifts the values of a column down by one. Minus one would shift them up and obviously you can use different numbers there. So this will have the effect of getting the previous diff value and storing it in the diff prev. So if I just run this again, the first value of course will be NAN because we've got nothing to shift. It's the start of the data frame. But you'll see that now the 3383 has landed here, the 3081 has landed here. And now we can compare diff and diff previous to understand if there's been a cross. Now, at first glance, that might sound quite easy, but it's a little bit trickier than you might think because we could have the case where diff is a minus and diff prev is a plus, or vice versa, or they're both the same. So what we're going to do is something you haven't seen before. We're going to write a little function that we're going to apply to each row of this data frame to calculate a value for a new column. So this function, we'll write it in the notebook here because later we're going to put all of this in a script, so we'll just leave it in the middle of the notebook. We're going to call this isTrade and it takes in row. And now in here, we're going to type if row.diff is greater than or equal to zero and row.diff previous is less than zero, return true. So we're saying that if the signs are different this way around, then return true. Likewise, we can copy and paste that. It's always a bit dangerous to copy and paste, but it speeds things up. And we'll say that if row.diff is less than or equal to zero and the diff previous was greater than zero, we also have a trade. Otherwise, we can return false. And then when you execute that sale, we have a function here that we can use to identify trades. And to do that, again, like most things in Pandas, because, you know, these problems have been seen before, so they're really, really easy to implement. We can make a new column. So we'll say dfma square brackets is trade is equal to df underscore ma dot apply open brackets is underscore trade comma axis equals one. Now, just to explain what this line is doing, because it's probably the most complicated line we've seen until now. We're making a new column, that's clear. We're taking our existing data frame and we're using something called apply. And this tells pandas that we want to apply a certain function to all of the data frame. We need to send the name of the function as a parameter that we want to apply to. We can send our own custom arguments into this and maybe later in the course we will, but we need to tell pandas which direction we're working in. In this case, axis one means we're working row by row. If we sent axis naught, it would say we're applying some function column by column. And when we have this axis equals one here, there's a default argument sent in. I've called it row. You can actually call whatever you like, but there's a default key first argument to this, which will be either the column or the row. So in other words, we're calling is trade for every single row in the data frame. This function is returning either true or false for each row in the data frame, and that will be stored in the data frame under the isTrade column. So if we go back up here and just run the head function again, you'll see now that we have isTrade. 
Now the first few here are all false because clearly there wasn't a trade because the differences are all positive so the lines haven't crossed. What we can do however is make ourselves a trades data frame and actually have a look at how many trades we have. To do this we're going to select a portion of our DFMA data frame. So we do this by saying df underscore trades is equal to df underscore ma square brackets where the dfma is trade is equal to true and we'll take a copy of this as well. And now if we just run head on this new data frame here we can see one is trade is true and that we always have a different sign of the of the diff and the previous diff which means the moving averages did indeed cross. And we can see that for the euro US dollar in the, the last period of 4,000 candles there are 73 trades that have been identified. Now one last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to plot one of these crosses in the middle of the chart. So if we take our trades and we just go for head and we look at the first one, we can see that that's at row 75. So if I want to plot row 75 in the middle, when I get to my data here, I want to go from something like, let's say, row 50 to 100. And that should give me the trade in the middle. And the trade itself is, let's just check the date, it was on the 11th of June 2200. So if I now get my plot, and I've got my 50 candles here and mine should be bang in the middle. Let's just plot this and have a look. And we don't have a cross in the middle. And in fact, we can see that we're on the 16th of June here. And we're nowhere near the correct date range. We go back to the 15th of June here. Yet our trade was the 11th of June. So what's happened here? And this is something really, really important to bear in mind in Pandas. So when I originally load this data frame all the way back up here, now you don't need to do this. I just want to show you because things can get confusing and I do df.head, you'll see that this number here, the row number, it's actually an index. It can be used to access a row. An index doesn't need to be a number. It could be a date, just something unique. And it starts at zero. When we did our analysis in the MAs, we dropped all the NAs. Now, remember, the NAs were at the start of the data frame. And because we were doing 64 MAs, we dropped index zero all the way up to 63, which is the first one then here. And you can see when we do head, that's the first one we have on the table here. So our data frame is actually starting in terms of index position at 63. So when we go down and see our trades table and we see index 75, that's only about 12 candles into the data frame, yet we think it's 75 in. And this can get a little bit confusing. The good news is you can just reset the index and start from zero again. So what we're going to do in the cell below this here is just reset the index. So you can do dfma reset index open brackets drop equals true so get rid of the current one and in place equals true and that will have the effect of resetting the indexes so that we start from zero again as you can see here and now if I go and get my trades we can see that we have completely different numbers and in fact we are at index 12 for the first cross so let's check the cross again then we're at index 12 so we'll go from zero up to 24 plot our chart again and now you can see that we've got our cross in the middle and we can see where our trade is happening. You can also verify that the trade is indeed correct. So that's it then for this video. We now finally have a data frame where we're identifying some trades for a moving average cross strategy. The next thing to do is to have a look at how we might go about evaluating those trades. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always and see you in the next one.